Welcome to Global Risk Community Chat. Today, our guest is Robert Jordan. I'm very happy to have you here today, Robert. Welcome. Thank you, Adja. It's a pleasure to be with you. Likewise. So uh, before we get into our topic, can you introduce yourself to our audience? Sure. Uh, my name is Robert Jordan. I uh, live in Chicago in the U.S. And uh, the beginning of my career was highly entrepreneurial. I was in graduate school and dropped out to start a magazine, became the first magazine in the world that covered online services and eventually the internet. Uh, you could say that that looked brilliant. However, we launched five years before the World Wide Web, and so it was not the easiest launch. But eventually, of course, when the World Wide Web was created, uh, we could do no wrong, and the business grew very fast. Uh, it, it ranked in the U.S. one of the 500 fastest growing businesses, and uh, eventually we sold it to a big publisher. And I then took on what was a very weird job title in the U.S. And interim, I became an interim CEO at that point, working with early stage tech companies. And eventually we formed an organization called Interim Execs, which is what I have been doing for many years. And it's a global matchmaker. Organizations show up that have a leadership need and we will supply it. And uh, it's out of that work and having um, seen thousands of executives from 50 countries that we ended up researching and writing a book called Right Leader, Right Time, which I know we're gonna talk about. Yeah. Sounds good. So yeah, very interesting journey. You had a lot of in experience you had as well. So I'm hearing, of course, we're gonna talk about leadership, being the right leader at the right time. So uh, what are some key things uh, when it comes to this? What does this exactly mean? Well, the thing we identified, you know, having 7,000 executives show up on our proverbial doorstep over the past decade, there was one disturbing trend that was not so good. And then there was a very positive thing we saw. The, the disturbing trend was that among the majority of executives, uh, they were having leadership experiences and career journeys that you would describe as okay, but not necessarily great. And then on the other side, when we just looked at the top two, three, four percent of executives by performance, they're having exceptional careers and leadership journeys. And we identified four distinct styles of leadership, referring to someone's process and approach and system. And, and that's that was something we thought was remarkable and that we had to write about. Yeah. And what would be some um more things about this like what are these uh, leadership styles how does it look like like how does you know how how do you become successful in each of them things like that it's a great question so we labeled the four leadership styles fixer artist builder and strategist and we can go through each one of them but it's interesting that that the more you dive into this more you the more you can see these distinctions in great leaders that are, they're, they're so obvious, you know? So for example, if we just look at a leader who's wired for turnaround, uh, for fixing distressed organizations, what we call fixer, um, it's a very particular kind of energy that is, it's the leader who, they love running into the burning building, but this kind of leader needs to run into the burning building time after time. You know, if you look at, Yet anyone who's successful in their career, they're always solving problems. But the question is, do you get your energy out of that? And the fixer does, and they need that. So as you and I are recording this, for example, in the world, there's been this big disaster in crypto, and in particular around a marketplace called uh, FTX. And as soon as that organization blew up, you know, over a million creditors, a bankruptcy court called in a, a CEO named John Ray. And it's not a surprise that prior to FTX, he had been an Enron salvaging assets there. It was another famous blow up years before. What would be some other examples, like maybe the artist type or the other types as well, if you could also quickly go through them? Artist is the energy that sees the world as a blank canvas or a piece of clay to be molded. I'm going to take a guess at you that you have artist energy and you, among other 
among other traits in terms of your style of leadership and how you work. Uh, the standout example in the world, I think people can, can think of in terms of innovative energy is Elon Musk. And specifically, this is referring to SpaceX, Tesla, the boring company. These are incredible innovations that are world changing. He's also a cautionary example because as you and I are talking, he still owns Twitter. I don't think he's necessarily going to own it as long. Tesla has been around now 20 years, but Twitter is kind of a cautionary tale because he came in with a fixer mindset and that didn't go very well for him. So that's artist. Builder. Everyone in business wants to be a builder. We get that. We mean something very specific, which is the kind of energy that takes the small team product service, something which is nascent and not yet at domination at market scale and needs to see that grow to scale. And what you tend to see with builder energy is that when that scale has been achieved, when there is that kind of market domination, that person can get bored and really wanna rotate off and need to move to a new project, team, set of client relationships to do it all over again. The fourth style is strategist. Strategist is the leader at scale. This is the leader, th this is someone within a complex or vast organization. And the kind of language that strategist leaders use is about loyalty and being mentored and mentoring others and about having been cross-trained and longevity within or organizations. That's not the language you hear from fixers, artists, and builders. Fixer, artist, and builder energy, you'll tend to see that those people are running teams or on teams that are five people, 10, 50, maybe 100. But there's a personal relationship, there's trust between individuals that gets work done. The strategist leader has a different toolkit when you're talking about in the tens or hundreds of thousands of people. Very interesting, actually. When you explained all of them, I also think the one that suits me would have been, I think, also the artist style. But yeah, very interesting take you have. So I want to follow up with one last question, and that would be for all for our audience that is listening right now, if they would, you know, like maybe get up tomorrow when they are going to maybe the leaders or the other people in the company, when they get up tomorrow and they want to do something regarding, you know, the leadership in their company, how can they, like, what can they do to maybe ensure that, you know, they can be the leader the company needs or, you know, other things they can implement that gets the company running in a successful way? It's a great question. And the first thing we would say is that the more you can know about your own particular wiring, your own particular energy, your own particular style is a good thing. It's a good thing because the more you reinforce that, the more successful you're going to be in your own career and the more powerful you're going to be in your leadership roles. So we're fans of people exploring that for themselves. And then what they do in terms of having a conversation with their team and learning more about the people on their team and what their wiring is. So we see this leadership style as an overlay, not the only tool, of course, but a tool to be explored so that people can be more effective. And we've also launched a free leadership assessment uh, because of the styles they're called Fixer Artist Builder Strategist, F-A-B-S. The assessment's called Fab's Leadership Assessment, and it's at rightleader.com. Yeah, thank you for sharing that as well. So with that being said, we have unfortunately run out of our time. So yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, uh, see you next time. Thank you, Edge. It's been a pleasure.